Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat and today we're going to be getting into seven scariest books that I have on my shelves behind me. Now before we get into it, I will just mention that I'm not going to be repeating books which I have included in past Halloween scariest videos. So for instance, I know I have three different videos up that I have made in past years for spookiest books or whatever for Halloween. So one of the videos is like scariest books that I've ever read. So they include stuff like Exquisite Corpse by Poppy Z. Bright, um, Under the Skin by Michelle Faber, and The Dumb House by John Burnside. So if you want to learn more about books like that, I will leave that video linked down below. There's also another one which is like top 10 scariest Japanese books I've ever read. Um, and that has stuff like In the Miso Soup by Ryu Murakami, as well as Hotel Iris by Yoko Ogawa, and many more. And I will also leave that one linked down below. And then the third one that I believe I've done is Top 10 Scariest Stories from Ray Bradbury specifically. So I'm diving into Ray Bradbury short story collections and picking out the 10 that I found the most horrifying. So um, if any of those recommendations sound cool to you, I will leave the links to those videos down below, but this video is going to be talking about seven books which I have read, I guess, recently, like since I made those videos, because I checked and these are not in those videos, so these are seven new scary books that I want to talk about with you guys. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in to the seven. So this is roughly in order of least scary to most scary, but like I said, all of them are kind of horror novels anyway, so just go into that knowing that, that they're all pretty scary probably. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So the first one is by an author not many people know about or talk about. So this is To Feel Stuff by Andrea Siegel. In this one, we're following a university student who is at, um, I believe, Brown University's medical um, hospital where she is diagnosed with illness after illness and they cannot figure out what is wrong with her. Um, and when she basically lives there. So when a new patient comes in, I believe his leg is fractured, they strike up a friendship and things go from there. I did not see the twist coming and it is so good. So this is To Feel Stuff by Andrew Siegel. This is actually an old read of mine that I don't think I've ever mentioned before because when I went back to America in March and I went in my like childhood bedroom, I saw this on my shelf and I brought it back with me to Australia. So that's why I'm just introducing you guys to this now. Um, because yeah, this is an old fave of mine and it's really good. So next up is a thriller. This was given to me by my aunt um, who lives in America. She's a big contemporary thriller reader, so she sends me the best that she likes. And this is Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Parrish. This is probably my favorite thriller before I started reading Jane Harper. Um, in this one, we are following a woman who is married to the perfect man. He is so romantic and so lovely to her and treats, spoils her horribly until they're married and they move in to the house together and she realizes that he is not as he appeared. And there are very dark things that happen in this novel. Um, trigger warning for animal abuse, mental abuse, physical assault, and I think also murder? I'm not sure. But uh, definitely check this out if you like thrillers, especially set in um, more contemporary feeling, like a suburban neighborhood. This would be for you. It's really creepy. Okay. And one that I picked up when I, since I've been in Australia and that I read and really enjoyed was Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. This is documenting the last, the last execution that happened in Iceland. And it's a reimagining of that woman's um, last few months of life and what she must have been thinking and feeling and who she met and what happened and why she was charged. And because you know she's executed in the end, this whole book is so gripping and sad and it just really gets you in the feels and it's so atmospheric, very cold and creeping, like the Icelandic weather is just relentless. So yeah, check it out if that sounds up all up your alley. Now we are getting to one of my favorite horror novels I have read probably of all time. Um, this is Let the Right One In. So maybe you guys have seen this. There are two movies out um, and I will leave links to the trailers of them down below. This is so good. It is longer. I don't usually read books that are this long. This is like over 500 pages, but it is so worth it. This has some of the best character study and like the best character arc and just the most righteous ending of all time. Ooh, I was so 
so impressed by the ending. So we are following Oscar, who is a boy who's like beaten up at school, he's really really picked on, and he has severe problems, and one night he's out on the playground like at his local like apartment building complex, and he meets a young girl who is quite weird, she smells bad, and she's never seen a Rubik's Cube before, which is like really weird to him, because like who hasn't heard of a Rubik's Cube? So they strike up a friendship, and dark things happen after that. This book was so good, like I highly recommend it. If you like creepy, if you like horror, if you like some of the more classic elements of Halloween, I really recommend this for you. Um, I don't want to say what element because it will kind of give away like a major plot point, but it was really good. Again, it's set in a cold climate. I don't know what it is with Halloween and like cold creepy climates, but I think it's like that you can't escape, it's bleak, and you're trapped there. I think that's why it works so well, like very misery, if you know what I mean. Okay, so getting into the darker content, we have Geek Love by Catherine Dunn. So I was debating putting this on or not, but in the end I did because it involves a lot of body horror and a lot of, I think, like really horrific elements that are dialed down within the context of the story. So we're following a main character who is a hunchback albino and her family was a carny family who controlled basically a traveling carnival and her parents decided to create their perfect children by giving the mom like alcohol and drugs and like experimenting with different ways to create um, disformities in their children. So all of the children have different aspects about them that make them unique and different. So the things that happen in here, when you're reading, it seems very normalized within the context of this world, which is completely out of the bounds of normal society. But then like if you take a step back and you're like, wow, everything that happens here is pretty horrific. So that's what we're dealing with and it was pretty good. And I really enjoyed it and it has stuck with me for a very long time. Speaking of books which have stuck with me for a very long time, this is The Vore by Brian Catling. Now, I don't often talk about this book because this is one of the ones that I wasn't overly impressed when I read it. I think I gave it three, three and a half stars, but this has stuck with me for so long and it is so creepy, really creepy. And the different story elements, because we're following different point of views, all follow a character which is very messed up and all of the timelines are equally dark. So we're following a man who lets loose an arrow into the dark like heart of the jungle and the arrow is made of like the bones of his ex-lover of his lover who has died so that's one storyline we're following someone who's trying to colonize and industrialize the dark jungle and he's basically a slave master but also maybe the owner of a malevolent demon spirit there are also like these angelic beings which have fallen to earth got lost can't get back up to heaven and they cause Havoc. And then we're also following someone who is, I'm not going to say what they are, but they are a being that causes a lot of panic and that's why they're kept in the basement until they get out. So this has a lot of very chaotic dark elements and I will admit that it was a bit of a slog to read, but boy does it leave a lasting impression. So if that sounds up your alley, then go ahead and check it out. You probably won't regret it, but if you do, it's not my fault. I warned you, it's kind of a slog, but I found it worth it. Okay, so the next book I want to talk about is We Need to Talk About Kevin by Lionel Shriver. This will forever make my creepy horror list, and this just happens to be also on my shelves. So this is following a boy who is born, and his mother is wondering what is wrong with him because he's not like other boys, and it's very apparent that he has something dark about him, and you're not sure how he has come to have this dark thing inside of him. Like, was it nature? Was it nurture? Was it because she didn't want to have him in the first place? Was it because the father was absent? Was it because of this? Was it because of that? Like, is he guilty? Is he not guilty? Like, yeah. So if you read this book in its entirety, it's hard to get into in the beginning, but if you get into it, you will get sucked into it. Like, I think it took me quite a while to read initially, and then once I got 100 pages in, it was like straight shot through. And it, this had a lot of really great discussion of who was to blame or how to fix the situation. And it was so engrossing. So if you like any of the books where it's like evil child, then this is like kind of the classic, I would say. Um, I also really loved another book recently, but I don't have it on my shelves. So that's why it's not in this video. 
But um, yes, this is that. So um, I'm kind of cheating because I'm going to throw it. These are the seven books that I mentioned. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But I'm also going to add one more book, which is eight. But this doesn't really count because it's not exactly on my shelves because it's a library book. But I have it right now at home, so I would be remiss not to mention it. This is Human Acts by Hong Kong. This is so dark. Oh my god. But like in a very very powerful way. So this is set in Gwangju, South Korea in 1980 during a time of rebellion in which the government completely squashed and massacred everyone involved and everyone who wasn't even involved either. Like they would drag people from their homes and shoot them in the streets. That level of just straight up killing everyone. So um, I lived in South Korea for two and a half years and I had never heard of this and I was shocked when I read this. And I guess it's just something people don't talk about there anymore. But in this story, there are multiple points of view and it makes it so, so powerful. The first person we're following is a boy who is helping to sort the corpses so that family members can find one of their killed loved ones. And then the second chapter, we're following one of the corpses as it's brought to a mass grave and things go from there. So um this is a very harrowing powerful read it has a lot of gore and a lot of body horror like to the 11th degree so if you don't have a strong stomach don't read it at all but if you can power through it is so so powerful so dark definitely check it out okay so that finishes up my top dark creepy reads on my shelves currently i hope that you guys are having an amazing halloween season and i will check back in with you later for another video. I love you all and I will talk to you later. Bye!